Hey everybody, welcome back to another edition of PD and P-Dubs Unscripted. P-Dubs, it's good to be with you here. Hey, great to be with you, PD, and I'm so excited that we have a guest today. Yeah, so if you're watching online on the video, you can see that we're not alone here today. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to apologize right at the beginning because we've gone through this a few times and I struggle with it, but we have Pastor Jorge... Mazarigos, Mazarigos with us. Yeah, hey, great. you did it. I All did right, it. yeah. Okay, that not going to say it again because I was going <laughs> to mess it up. Yeah. But yeah, so it's so good to have you, Pastor Jorge, with us here. Thank you. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. this has been a long time coming with it a lot sure of things has. when it comes to this podcast where P-Dubs and me had this idea, like, we should do a podcast, and then we just got busy, and then a year later, like, we should do a podcast, and yeah. we finally got it going. And same with having you as a guest when we saw you at our pastor's conference in 2022. We're like, man, he's doing awesome ministry. Mm -hmm. We should get him on the podcast. And I think we talked a little bit about it. And then just time went by. And here we were in 2023 at the pastor's conference. And we're like, we completely forgot. I think we both had a conversation with you Uh about getting you on separately. Right. Yeah, that's funny how that worked. Like We didn't even talk about like that we had spoken to you and uh, until after our conversations. And I'm like, Oh yeah, I talked to Pastor Jorge, and he's like, "Yeah, so did I." And I told him, "He's I said the same thing." And so I'm glad (laughs) it's finally happening because uh, friends, uh, Pastor Jorge is doing amazing things out in his area in uh, Dundee, and uh, and uh, we just think this is a great opportunity for our audience uh, and our church to be more aware of ministry opportunities in the nearby suburbs that maybe we could come alongside and number one, create a greater awareness or two, possibly uh, partner and have greater involvement with. So we're just thankful that you're willing to come in and visit with us today. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's a privilege to be here. I'm so happy uh, to be here and to share what the Lord is, is doing through our ministry. Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, and we'll get to it later on as we talk more about the awesome things that the Lord is doing through you. But just for our audience to get to know you a little bit better. So, like, where are you from? And like, share a little bit about your family, if you don't mind. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm from Guatemala. I moved to the United States uh, 23 years ago. Uh, when I came here, I didn't speak even English. Wow. <laughs> I learned English here, which is a beautiful language. So hard to, right. to learn, mm. <laughs> but beautiful. Yes. Um, uh, currently, we are serving in um, uh, West Dundee, Illinois, m- with my wife and my three uh, kids. Okay. Yes. Awesome. My wife, just just uh, to let you know, my wife just finished her uh, deaconess program at Concordia Seminary, and awesome. she will be installed next year in our church as our deaconess. Fantastic. Awesome. That's great yeah. news. Oh, that's that's great a news. great accomplishment. Yeah. yeah Congratulations, Sarah. Thank, thank you What's so your much. wife's name? Karina. Karina. Karina, yes, yes. And did you um, get married in Guatemala? Yes, yes, yes. I got married in Guatemala in 1995. Oh, 95. Yeah, okay. 95. Yeah, some time ago, 28 years ago. <laughs> Very <laughs> good. Yes, it was just my, and um, December 2nd was our anniversary. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, 28 years. Just oh. this past weekend. Yes. So oh, congratulations. Yes. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's excellent. So uh, you said you have two children? Three. 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 Uh, Anna, uh, 28. Uh, Laura, 25. Uh, this uh, ninth, no, uh, December 9th. Mm-hmm. And George, uh, 16. Okay. Uh, yes. yes. Very good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and the three kids still um, serving at church uh, every, every Sunday. Yeah, they're nice. still serving uh, in church, they have ministries. Uh, George uh, plays uh, the drums and the congas, uh, <laughs> and he translates uh, the sermons into English. Uh, our church is um, becoming now a bilingual church, and we are in this transition, and George is translating into Fantastic. English in, in real time. Mm-hmm. Um, Anna is uh, uh, the older one. She is uh, serving in the media Aria and Laura is actually singing our band. Yes. Nice. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's uh-huh. great when the whole family's, you know, that, that, um, that's a, bliss. a part of it. it it's got to be a yeah. wonderful be a gr- blessing. And a great joy to be able to serve with your family in that way. It is. It is. I'm so thankful for all of them. Uh, they support the ministry. They support, uh, you know, my 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 ministry also. And that that's a, that's a lovely 
experience you mm-hmm. know to have your family serving alongside especially not only as a pastor but like as as a father to see your children so involved with the work of the lord that is that i can't just express that's such a wonderful blessing you yeah know, that the lord has given you so that's wonderful definitely i'm so so thankful yeah. and grateful uh for uh, what the lord is doing through us yes yeah so how did you and your wife meet okay uh we met in a christian group uh many many years ago, yeah many many years ago yeah uh, let me share this to you uh, when I was young, I was going to the Roman Catholic Church, and I, I have the desire to beca- become a, a priest. Mm. And I moved to Costa Rica to explore that possibility. Um, when I was there, uh, I started listening, you know, about the teaching. I started having conflicts about, you know, the, the, the teachings. And when I come back to Guatemala, I decide not to move forward in that direction. And I come back to Guatemala and I start attending a, a evangelical church. And I met my wife in that church yeah, some, some time ago, many years mm, ago. Yes, okay. yes, that's how I met my, my wife. Very nice. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. So was it ministry that brought you to America? Uh, in the beginning, I was coming to make some business. I was coming to buy cars and some other, you know, items and, you know, get back to Guatemala and, and sell, you know, and those items. But then the Lord put in my heart the desire to come to this country and to, you know, to serve him somehow. And we decided with my wife to move uh, to America. And, and then we started looking for a church here. Mm. Uh, I didn't know anything about the Lutheran Church when we moved here, and I'm start attending, uh, you know, some other churches. Uh, most uh, of those churches were evangelicals, but more kind of Pentecostal background, very charismatic, uh, right. beautiful churches, but not really uh, for me. You mm-hmm. know, I, I was mm-hmm. uh, just I didn't like much the way you know uh, they. Uh, Worship the Lord. Okay, uh, we we were like where to go, you know, mm-hmm. and and then we decide let's come back to the Roman Catholic because you know the, the priest they are well prepared and they they are they are good with the message. Unfortunately, I don't believe in this. I don't believe in that. Uh, you know, that was uh, some of kind of a, a battle inside. Mm-hmm. Kind of wrestling yeah, with that. Yes, you know, we, we didn't know. Until a friend of mine invited me to uh, go to his church. He said, I, I'm, I'm going to a church, to a Lutheran church. It was the first time I, I heard about the Lutheran mm-hmm. church. Um, that's a Hispanic ministry. Uh, uh, we are putting together a band to, you know, to, to play in church, but we don't know much about that. And I know you're a musician. Maybe you can help us. And I say, yeah, yeah, I, I will, I would love to to do mm-hmm, that. Mm-hmm. Maybe not in the beginning. In the beginning, I was like, I maybe know the church that you know will be the same uh, uh, as the previous churches. But I say, I, I will go. I, I, I will go. And um, I went to to this church in Aurora, San Pablo, Aurora, mm. and uh, I start uh, helping them. And every time I, I go there and I'm, I'm, uh, help them, uh, I start asking questions to the pastor there. Mm. And I say, yeah. Great. <laughs> yeah, and I start asking questions. Why do you have this? Why you, what do you, you know, do? Or why you believe this or that? And he start taking the time and, and, and share with me. And, she, and he starts sharing about Martin Luther. Mm. You know, and okay. he starts sharing what Martin Luther left the church and and I was thinking wow that's pretty similar or what I found out you know and 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 I said wow I like this I really like this and I started coming every Sunday and I told my wife you know I will go by myself and I will listen to the pastor and I will see if this is a a good church or it's not (laughs) yeah you know and I and I came uh, every Sunday and I sit on the back pew and I was making notes. Man, you're the, already a good Lutheran sitting in the <laughs> back. Yes, <Yeah>. right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of. I, well, I don't like it now, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I, I was just taking notes, you know, uh-huh. what, what he's telling, what he's, 
saying and every so I say, wow, that's that's pretty good, you know. And if we, and I approach him, say, you know, I have a question here. You say this, uh, and he took the time to you know explain me. Um, after six months of driving back and forth, I was living in Chicago back on those days in 2002. Mm-hmm. Um, I was driving back and forth and, uh, and I told my wife, after six months of doing that every Sunday, that's a good church. Mm-hmm. That's, that's a good church. You know, they, they, they preach mm-hmm. Christ and that, that's a beautiful doctrine. Um, the, the pastor is well prepared. You know, uh, they, they, they are just so so lovely people, um, and I told my wife we we we, we have to go now as a family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we start driving back and forth from Chicago until uh, Pastor told me you should live here in Aurora, <laughs> and we decide to move. Uh, you know, from Chicago to Aurora. That's a that is a bit of a drive. Yes, sure. yeah, like that was hour like an hour least. and so. Yeah, 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 yeah. A little more than an hour and with, with traffic. Just kind of curious because you said your son plays the drums and conga. What instrument do you play? Because you're talking about playing instruments there. Yeah, uh, I play several instruments. I play drums, guitar, bass, piano, a uh, little bit of trumpet, and some other instruments. Very talented. Yeah. yeah. Man, oh man. <laughs> man, I wish I had that musical talent. <laughs> I, I, can, I can't even play my trumpet that's sitting in my church office. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the Lord uh, use uh, our talents uh, for His glory. Yeah. Right, and like what I hear in your story is like, he used something you didn't even anticipate, like you just got invited to go use your musical gifts and abilities at the church in Aurora, and little did you know the door that the Lord was opening for you that was leading you back to that path of ministry that you originally set out upon. Yes, 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 that, that was so, so, so beautiful. Um, I'm so happy today that the Lord is mm. using me in different ways. I have a curiosity question around the Hispanic people. Many Hispanics connect through the Roman Catholic Church. Um, I live near um, Carpentersville, kind of out mm-hmm. where you're at, mm-hmm. and there's this beautiful uh, uh, Hispanic Catholic Church down uh, one of the main roads, and I, I drive by on occasion, and I always marvel at like how many people are there, and I think, wow, that... That priest or that pastor really has a good ministry going on. You know, it's things like Sunday night I drive by and it's packed Mm -hmm. or uh, just different times. And you had said that you had originally gone and was, you know, kind of checking out some Catholic churches. And now you've landed into the arena of of Lutheran faith. Is, Is there... Um, a lot of Hispanics that go outside of the Catholic Church for their faith, like in Lutheran faith, or like you had also mentioned Pentecostal. Mm-hmm. It, is that a big um? Is that a big stretch for them to go from you know outside the Catholic faith? Because I would imagine there's probably some family pressures, like. You know, you were raised as a Catholic, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so I wonder if you could speak to that, like for the those who are Hispanic, if they find God in faith outside of the Roman Catholic Church, and and how does that, how do they navigate that with their family? Yeah, uh, what I find out is that um, most of the people who claim to be Roman Catholic, they don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Okay. You know, they are going to church because mom says mm. or dad says you yes. have to go to church. It's more like, I will say like cultural. Yes. More okay. than a personal relationship with, with, with Christ. And I that see. makes a, a huge difference, you know. Okay, yes. Um, um, uh, I, and I think we have now a great opportunity to share the love of Jesus and his word. And it's not easy because, because it's a cultural thing. You know, if mom says, if dad says, then I should go there and, you know, they have the truth there. I must go there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, right. and they don't value much th- that relationship with Jesus. I see. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that, that, that's a, a, 
issue, it's a barrier there that mm-hmm. then it is not easy to break through mm-hmm. uh, and connect them to, to Jesus. But but that's what the Lord sends us to do. You know, that's mm-hmm. that's that's my ministry about. Yeah. That that was my thought about that, but I just never really fully understood. But I, I thought there has to be some family barriers or oh, yeah. like struggles. Yes. Like if someone in the family was not a Catholic but was Pentecostal or Lutheran, that must have caused some strain among yeah. the family. My my own family. Okay. You know, that was, they, they are, and some of them are, you know, Roman Catholics. Uh, um, they don't want to make any change, you know, mm. uh, but at the same time, most of them, they don't know uh, the doctrine, you know, ah, uh, uh, right. you know. I, don't, I mean, they don't compare what the doctrine says with the, what the Bible says. I understand. You know, not, not, yes. not, not everything they said is based on on Bible, you know. Mm. But you know, and 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 that's that's the problem when people don't know the Bible. I know what you mean because uh, you had a curiosity. You know, when you told us like how you sat in the back and you were writing notes, not everybody has that mindset about faith. Um, many people just take whatever the pastor or the priest is saying and saying, well, I, I, I find that to be true. I believe that without really testing it against scripture. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And and if I'm hearing you right, maybe maybe a lot of people in the Hispanic community are more leaning on like mom and dad say I better go to church and this is the church I have to go to. Yes. And that's that's all that it needs to be for them. Yes. It, it There's is, no like relationship like you were digging into. Exactly. That's that's what it is. You know, they don't they don't know the Bible. Mm-hmm. You know, they just believe what you know they they've been told right. and they accept that as a truth and they live their lives like that. Right. They they don't And to be fall. honest we probably see that in our Lutheran faith too, right. where there's people who I'm just going to believe what the pastor says or what we do in the service, and they really don't know the Bible that well. Right, because I mean, we had a podcast not that long ago about, was it things that aren't in the Bible? Yeah, yeah. Or that things that aren't in the Bible, but people ascribe to the Bible? Mm-hmm. 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 Or was it vice versa, that things that are in the Bible that you wouldn't expect? I think it was that one. We yeah. went the positive spin. Yeah, those things that are yeah. in the Bible that you didn't know came from the Bible. And there mm-hmm. are things even, we were like, oh, I didn't realize that, and... So, you know, and we've talked that there's a sense of almost, in some cases, biblical illiteracy where people don't know what's in the Bible, they've heard it, and sometimes I'm just like, did I not realize that? And, you know, I'm probably Mm -hmm. just as guilty at different times as well, but it's that being in God's Word, like you dived into, like when you were studying, when you went to Costa Rica, you're like, wait, this isn't what's in Scripture, and they're like, this isn't right, I want to be something that's close to what's in Scripture. Yeah. Something that I think is, is a key factor is when when you realize that Jesus is the word, mm. you want to be closer to the word of God, closer yes. to Jesus. Uh-huh. And that's the point, you know, when, when you believe, okay, Jesus is the word. I want to be with Jesus every day. I want to mm. read the Bible every day right. because Jesus is there. You, you know, that's, that's, that's the way that I'm with Jesus every day single day. I love the way you just said that. That's so wonderful. Yes, yeah. It, it, yeah, just find you know, you you don't you don't need to go anywhere else. It's, it's just it's the Bible, it's Jesus there with you daily. Mm-hmm. Daily daily. And, and when people should open their eyes and their hearts to that truth and say, "Okay, I want to be with Jesus today." Right. You know, just I will open the Bible. Right. Jesus is right there. Mm-hmm. I want to be with him. Yes. You know, I want to I, I want to take his word in my heart today. I want to learn from him. That that that's 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 the real deal there. Mm-hmm. And that right. that's a, that's a huge difference, you know, in saying I am Catholic or I'm Lutheran or right. you know, of I'm follower Amen. of Jesus. Yes. You yeah. Know? And what's that's, beautiful that's, like as you're saying that I was saying about this idea that on this side of heaven, that is how we are with Jesus. Until that day when the Lord calls us home, where we will see Him face to face. The only way mm. we get that right now is through His Word, being Amen. in His Word. Yeah. Amen. Yes, yes, totally, totally. And and that's why uh, my ministry is going always to that direction to share Jesus' Word. 
Mm-hmm. You know, we that's what we want, you know, to people to to hear, uh, to listen what Jesus, you know, is telling us. Um, that that leads us to to our Facebook page. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why uh, many people is listening our uh, worship service or our sermons online, especially on Facebook, thousands of people, because. People now is is listening the truth, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, they are listening about Jesus, mm-hmm. and 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 they start getting a closer relationship with God, and that's 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 mm. a battle, you know. Yeah, well, that's a good transition, Jorge. From you know, you ended your story of you know you and your wife going and moving to Aurora and uh, being a part of that ministry. So, if you could now share with us how you got to where you're at in Dundee and like how you're connecting with the community. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when we moved to Aurora, I was uh, serving as a music director in that church, but always asking so many questions to pastor, always uh, about faith. Uh, and he was uh, so good, uh, so kind and always getting back to me, but at some point, after some years, he said, you should go to seminary. You, know, <laughs> you should enroll in this because, you know, uh, I can't handle this anymore. You, <laughs> you, 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 you got to go into that. Uh, I started my pre-sem at church, actually, with him. You know, I'm taking some of, uh, you know, pre-sem classes, right. you know, like doctrinal classes. Um, and then in 2011, I, I, I was sent to St. Louis, uh, to mm-hmm. the Center for Hispanic Studies at St. Louis, Missouri. Um, I was ordained in 2014. Okay. Um, initially, uh, my desire, my idea was when I uh, done with the school, I want to be called as a part-time pastor uh, alongside uh, Pastor Merlo in Aurora, uh, because I, 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 I had my business in Aurora, a furniture store, and my kids were there, um, my life was, was there. Mm-hmm. Um, that was the plan, the initial plan. When, when, when you get uh, ordained, we will call you as a, a, a part-time pastor, and you will serve here. But then the Lord had a different plan. Mm. <laughs> like he does a lot of the time. <laughs> yes, exactly. yes, he changed the whole scenario here. And then... Uh, President uh, Gilbert was uh, in those days our district mm-hmm. president, yeah. and Mike Mast. Uh, they they came uh, actually. Mike Mast was sent, and he came to my business. And he said, uh, uh, "Jorge, we have an opportunity to serve as a missionary pastor in Elgin. Um, we have an opportunity there. They want to open a Hispanic ministry there." Uh, I said, "I said, I said the first time, uh, thank you, but no." <laughs> <laughs> no thanks you know I have my business here I have yes. my kids here I want to keep serving here uh, no thanks after three times and after talking with with Pastor Merlo I start thinking probably that's what the Lord wants okay. you know, I start praying about it yeah. every time I pray I was like I think that's what the Lord wants me to do. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that the Lord is calling me as a full-time pastor now, but I do have my business. I have my kids in school. I'm serving my church. That was like, I'm not quite sure if this is, but somehow I knew it, but on the other side, I was like debating. Almost you know? like a Jonah situation. Good thing you didn't send a giant fish to swallow you up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was just, 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 uh, very difficult time, but in prayer and, and talking with my wife, I said, I think that the Lord is calling me. Yeah, mm. we, we should move to Elgin. Um, and after, you know, months of praying, um, uh, you know, talking, um, just let the, letting the Lord do, you know, his job in, in our lives, we say, okay, yes, yeah, mm. we, we got to go. We got to go. And then we moved to Elgin. Um, that's what uh, be they faith, which means life a faith, mm-hmm. life and faith uh, start. Yeah, uh, we we came to Elgin and we were a mission of a another Lutheran church, uh, Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in, in Elgin. Okay. Uh, but I said uh, there are so many Good Shepherd in Spanish, El Buen Pastor. So many churches call El Buen Pastor, mm. and a lots of Roman Catholics, Lutherans, uh, and I said uh, we got a 
you know, just have different a name. different name. And I, I come up and, you know, pray and pray, what, what should name this ministry? Yeah, and say, mm-hmm. be thy faith, life and faith. You know, we have life in Jesus, mm-hmm. you know, through faith. And say, right. you know, and say, that's a great name. Yeah, right. say, okay, let's, 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 let's do that. Mm-hmm. And we started like, 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 like a mission in, in 2014. In 2020, we became an independent church and affiliated to the Missouri Wow, Synod. within six years. In six years. That's yes, amazing. And, and we are three years now uh, as a solo church in West Indy. Wow. Yeah, we, we moved our church from uh, Elgin to, to West Indy mm-hmm. uh, because of the pandemic. Uh, uh, we were about to buy the building to, to our brothers and sisters of Good Shepherd. Uh, but because of the pandemic, we decided not to move forward. We were approved uh, by the bank, and you know, to purchase the building. But we said we can't because mm. you know uh, that's not a good idea. Uh, and they were in need to sell the building, and they sold the building. And thanks be to God, the Lord opened another uh, door for us in West Indy, the yeah. where we currently are. Right, and that was the thing. Like a couple of weeks ago, when I was visiting at your church, dropping off some turkeys, as you showed me around, like. You know, the amazing things that your members have been able to do to build up, like, and build and fix things there. Like, I know the children's room, you were showing me all the different things that they were doing there. So, it's great that your your members have taken heart in, like, putting some sweat equity into it and saying that we want to make this place our own. Yes. Something that uh, we learn is that um, uh, this is not, it's, it's our church, Yes. But it's not our church too. It's, 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 it's God's church. Mm-hmm. And because of that, the Lord always take care or care about his people. Always. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what I, I told my, my, my church members. Okay. It doesn't matter if we lost the last uh, building. You know, mm-hmm. we got to keep doing you know, our mission. We got right. to keep sharing the love. We got to... Doing the Lord's work. Yes. Right. Keep, you know, uh, the building in good shape. Um, yeah, we ask uh, permission to to Bethlehem and say, uh, can we fix these rooms? You know, they are empty and, they are empty and they don't, they're just wasting time there. Mm-hmm. And can we uh, fix these rooms and use it for ministry? And say, yeah, go ahead. And that's what we did. Yeah. You know? And we just, you, you saw the, the kids' room. Right. That's an amazing room. Mm-hmm. Really nice. New carpet, right. new walls, uh, yeah. everything. And everything was. And the food pantry starting up. When's that starting up again? Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, we, we start again with the food pantry. Uh, and we have been helping people already. Yeah, and we were approved by the health department. And we will open uh, to our community pretty mm. soon. Yes, Very nice. Yes, that's... Now, you guys just had a celebration in early, mid-November, right? About uh, on a Saturday, you know, can you tell us about that day and like all that your church did in your community? And Sure, sure. That was in, that was in open house. Okay. Yeah, we call celebration is an open house where we uh, show, uh, the peop- show people what we are doing as a ministry. And we give some tours and we talk about our different ministries. Um, people come that day and they walk around the building and, uh, and that was a beautiful event. But this year, that was something uh, uh, good because uh, we always are struggling financially, mm. all right? Because uh, we are in a small church, uh, Hispanic church too. But uh, our desire, our goal is always to share uh, the love of Jesus to, to others. Mm-hmm. And we say, how can we do that? Um, say okay. Let's let's uh, talk to our friends. Let's talk to people, and they want to share the love of Jesus. And and you know we we are instruments of the Lord, and we start sharing that with 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 some churches, and they start helping us financially. Mm. Um, that's that's the that's the open house. But this year uh, we are launching our capital campaign. Oh, and, oh, nice! And let me share this Good to for you. you. That, that's a that's a uh, that's a gift from the Lord. Some time ago, some months ago, about three or four months ago, more, more, more like, now like six months ago, uh, the Lord put in my heart uh, to raise some money for ministry because it's not just about uh, you know to buy paper for copy machine or pay mm-hmm. the copy machine or right. or pay salaries. It's about really it's about ministry. You know, right. we, we we need resources to do ministry mm-hmm. to connect with people. We didn't have those financial resources. 
and the Lord put in my heart, uh, you know, to, to, to do a capital campaign, to raise some, some money, you know, to do ministry. And the Lord put in my heart a, a specific number, mm. you know. Uh, but I, I was like, I'm not quite sure if this is from the Lord or it's just me. You, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I, I know how much this is going to cost us. Uh, but I, I was praying a lot and, and say, Lord, are you sure this is what you want? And I was, uh, and I start like getting in my heart the same answer, you know, mm. this is the month uh, I want you to ask. And I have a group of brothers and sisters, uh, all, all uh, Christians. Um, some of them, they are like business people. They are outside of my church. They are like, like ad my advisory board. Oh, right. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and we get together, you know, every couple months and we, we, we talk about ministry. We talk about how can we reach more people. Um, I think it's, it's a good thing to have people from outside that Very good. can see your ministry mm -hmm. from outside, you know, to help Get their you. perspective. Yes, yes, yes. And, and I say I have to share with, with them the idea of, of raising up, you know, financial support for our ministry. But I was ashamed to share what the Lord put what? in my heart. And oh. I say I, I would just ask them, you know, how uh -huh. much they think. Uh, um, they say that maybe we, sh we should raise $5,000. You know, some others say maybe $10,000, maybe fifteen. You know, they, but it wasn't the number, you know, but I was just trying to... Gauge, like figure out where they yes, are Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and then I, I have to share, I have to share that with my consul, you know, my church consul, mm -hmm. in order mm -hmm. for them to approve. And then... I, I just knew it. I have to tell them the, the exact number because they have to approve this. Right, you know? right. And that was the first time I, I mentioned the number. I said to them, uh, guys, I think we should raise like $60,000. Mm. We got to pay $10,000 of our church credit card. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, uh, we need $50,000. And this is not going to be for salaries, for anything. It's just to do ministry, to to, to make bridges to connect with our community. Yes. Sure. And you shouldn't see their faces. <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they say like this pastor is just mm. out of control. Yeah. He's not, he, 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 were they going to run you out? <laughs> yeah, yeah, almost. <laughs> they, they were like, um. anyways, they approve. I say, okay, I know this is from the Lord. Um, I just know that. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm pretty confident. Um, in between my council meeting and Next Sunday, somebody donate to two people don, donate uh, the ten thousand dollars to pay the credit card. Wow! wow. And uh, on Sunday, when I make the announcement to the congregation, or we uh, we make the announcement to the congregation. Uh, same thing with my congregation. When they heard about the numbers, they were like, "Okay, Ooh, boy, <laughs> we will approve that." But you know, they they were like. They don't know what they are doing, you know. Yeah. How in the world we will raise this this money? Mm -hmm. But they approve, and they, okay. Uh, and say, and, and I told the congregation, I'm pretty convinced this is from the Lord. That Sunday afternoon, I went, I went home, and I was cleaning my grill. I was uh, cooking the day before. I said, I will cook my, clean my my grill. It's Sunday afternoon. It's mm -hmm. nice weather. I was cleaning when a friend of mine called me. I share with him uh, before we formalize the 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 capital campaign. Uh, I share a little bit of you know my desire of you know uh, put this together and um, the purpose of the capital campaign. Uh, uh, and he called me say, uh, Pastor Jorge, do you remember that you talked to me about the capital campaign some time ago? How this. It's going and say, oh, the, they approve, brother. Uh, thank you for asking. Uh, now we got to pray, you know, then the Lord will provide and say, yeah, that's what I'm calling you because I want to uh, uh, provide some support to your capital campaign. I believe in you. I believe in your ministry. Um, I would like to donate $25,000 as a matching fund for your capital campaign. Wow. wow. If, if you do math, the ten thousand dollars for the credit card was paid. Yep. And now fifty thousand dollars. Yes. That that is matching twenty-five. It's a, from today and on, I will cover any uh I will match I mean, a, any any gift. Uh, gift to up to twenty five thousand. Up to twenty five thousand. Wow. 
Praise the Lord. Well, thanks, really, yeah. Wow, is he moving? Yes. He, that, that, that was like... Wow, what a, was, like a relief for you, probably. Oh, yes. That was like, okay, Lord, that was you. That was, the, it, was, it wasn't me, you know, because I, I was afraid, you know, because it, it's not easy. Just uh, the Lord is telling me, you know, yeah, it's not right. an easy thing to do. And I exactly. actually don't, I don't say that, right. you know, it, it, to, I have to be sure that it's, it's coming from the Lord. I, all the time I had that, that in my heart, you know, then he will provide, he will do that, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that was the, 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 the proof that the, the Lord is behind us and, and taking care of us. Uh, That's great. And yeah, we are now uh, launching this capital campaign and hope that soon we will raise uh, these $50,000. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's something we can pray for. <laughs> yeah, we can pray know, for that. Please. Join you in that and in prayer and... Uh, it's it's apparent and obvious that God is moving uh, mightily among you and your people. That's fantastic. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. It is. yeah we're so thankful for that. Yeah. When when you were talking about how the Lord called you to get out of your comfort zone at Aurora into this mission, and to me it was like He was very clear to you where He wanted you to go. But not everything was all worked out, and like everything just didn't work out wonderfully. And there it is. You you have been faithful to the Lord's calling, and He keeps working through, even moving from Elgin to Dundee, and now it's like, okay, uh, what do we do now? And then He speaks clearly to you about this number, and then He moves so mightily. Right. That's. What a testimony to God's faithfulness. Thank you. You know? Yeah, yeah. I he's mean, good. He's, yeah. he, he's good. Praise be our Lord. S- something that I learned some time ago, then we must obey God, even if we don't see clearly the path. Mm-hmm. We, gotta, we, we just got to be faithful. Yeah. Uh, because some Christians think that if, it's, if, if this is coming from God, it's going to be easy. All the doors is going to be open. Mm-hmm. Everything is going to be nice. And, uh, and that's the way the Lord is. Saying. No, no, no. Sometimes it's, it's very hard. Right. So, yeah. Sometimes our persecution, sometimes it's poverty, sometimes it's uh, uh, your own personality. Right. You know, who knows? Right. But, but what we have to believe and understand, and if, if the Lord is sending us to do something, is because He's with us. He's going mm-hmm. with us, and, and yeah. He's going to take care of us. And I learned that. You know, when, when we moved to, to West Andy, I was uh, out of parsonage. We lost the parsonage because they sold the building mm. without salary, mm-hmm. without church building. My first thought was, I should put my name in a call. Maybe you know another church will call me and, yeah. and for you know. Uh, I never found peace on that thought. Wow! I said, no, it's not about me. I, I left my business. I left. I, I sold my house. I moved my kids because the Lord called me here, and. Maybe I will solve my financial problems if I put my name in a call and some of the church, you know, mm-hmm. those churches, you know, right. can see my name and they call me. But I never found peace on that talk. And I said, no, let's wait in the Lord. Let's pray. And I asked my wife, we, we have to pray. Mm-hmm. We have to pray. And we, we have to let the Lord tell us clearly what he wants us to do. Mm-hmm. But I don't feel peace you know, putting my name in a call mm. for, you know, a, you a, 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 and, and the miracles start happening. Mm. You know, a frame pastor start, you know, uh, told me we have two buildings and we're using one of our buildings only once a week. Mm-hmm. Would, you, would, would you like to come here and join us, you know, and use our buildings? First thing. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, I mean, as I'm listening, it's not a straight shot like people think. It can be a long, winding road. Yeah. But as you said, the Lord is with us even as we're winding through that path that He's taking us down. Yeah. And it leads us to where He wants us to go. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, and, and I think, I know I'm hearing it in PD probably as well, and we hope our, our listeners are too, is like your heart to reach out and be connected to your community. And that's a big reason why we started this podcast is to connect our communities together. And uh, so I I hope uh, our listeners are picking up on that. Uh, uh, Pastor Jorge's heart is to connect uh, into his community, reach out 
spread the the gospel of Christ and get involved. I I mean, I see, you know, from outside looking in, you're very involved in people's lives, you know, like families and things like that. And uh, so I guess my question that I have for you, maybe that you could share with our audience is how could someone, uh, how could they support your ministry or um, become a part of it or, you know, what are ways that people who are interested in what you're doing can get connected? Get connected to you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I think the first uh, thing you can do for me and for our ministers is to pray. Mm-hmm. To pray for us. To pray uh, for our ministry. Uh, and also, it can involve in some of our ministries. Like uh, we have ESL, English as a Second Language mm. classes available. Uh, you can serve there. Uh, we have the food pantry. You can donate Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. towards the food pantry. Uh, We have the kids ministry. You can support and donate towards the uh, kids ministry. Uh, We have the music ministry. Uh, You can be part, you can support, you can pray for it. Mm -hmm. There are many ways. You can go to our website, uh, which is bidaifechurch.org, and you can see all the opportunities to support us. And you can support us through this capital campaign because this capital campaign will allow us to uh, connect with more people and mm-hmm. create more uh, resources. Right. Yeah, because when I probably when I share this out tomorrow on social media, I'll tag like your, I'll put your website and tag your Facebook okay. for your church, so people can click it that way as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's and that's the kind of one thing I want to touch a little bit about is your online presence because as P Dubs talked about, you talked about that community. You're not just reaching the West Dundee community, but you're already going back home to Guatemala mm-hmm. and, and Latin America, right? With your your reach. Yes. Yes. Uh, thanks be to God. People uh, are sharing my sermons uh, everywhere in, in Latin America, in my own country, mm-hmm. Guatemala, in Mexico, in, uh, um, here in the United States, in Venezuela, in Colombia, in many different places. Um, yeah, we are reaching out thousands of people every, every week through our mm. um, sermons. Uh, and I think... Uh, what I what I find out because I get a lot of messages uh, on Facebook, uh, like uh, Messenger, uh, people is hungry of, of mm. hearing the the truth. You know, right. uh, uh, people is tired of of uh, false miracles. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, are asking money all the time. You know, people is, is tired of that. You know, and mm-hmm. they 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 want and they need a personal relationship with Christ. I think my messages are focused on that. Yeah. You know, and, and knowing Jesus as, as your savior and your friend. You mm-hmm. Know? Mm-hmm. Well, friends, as I, as I listen uh, and PD, you kind of, I'm so glad you talked about his reach back home because like your mission, you have a local mission in Dundee, but you also have an extended mission. Like, you know how in the book of acts, you know, uh, Jesus said, you know, you know, be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And so, like, your Jerusalem is Dundee, <laughs> the ends of the earth, back home in Guatemala. And so, that's exciting to hear right. when when a church is really hitting on both and treating both uh, areas as the mission. And uh, so, I think maybe that could excite some listeners to check out uh, Vide Fe. Is that how I say yeah, it? Yeah, Vide Fe. Vide Vide Fe. Fe. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, to get connected. Right. And, uh, yeah, it's not that far of a drive. I made it, like I said, a couple of weeks ago. Just mm-hmm. an easy drive. And you made it today, nice and easy. Yeah. I mean, a little bit harder when you get to Emmanuel to figure out where to park. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, and, and I think PD and I, you know, we would love to keep, keep the conversation, the relationship uh, connected and growing. Uh, here at Emmanuel, we, we would love to, at the right time, when it's right, to have you maybe speak uh, and preach here at Emmanuel to expand upon our conversation today and uh, allow people to meet you face to face and approach you and to get to know you. And, and I know our heart is like, we bring people together and let the Lord do the rest, mm-hmm. right? You know, like mm-hmm. let him... Yeah 
develop whatever he has in mind and that's right. see how that happens. Yeah, so that that that's right. Yeah, and thank you for this ministry. Um, uh, that that's beautiful. Your podcast. Um, um, thank you for that. That that's uh, that's mm-hmm. beautiful. And I encourage uh, you know your congregation and your friends to support this kind of ministry, this type of ministry that's needed in this era. We we mm-hmm. cannot just count numbers. In church, mm-hmm. you know, I, I cannot compare my numbers in church with the numbers outside right. the church, you know, right. which are uh, numbers outside are huge, right. you know, and and that's that's great because we are sharing Jesus' message to people. This is a ministry, and and, and this is a beautiful ministry. Here. Mm. Thank, Thank you for you. that too. Thank, Thank you, yeah, Pastor Jorge. Yeah, yeah, that was like our whole idea is just another means to reach people. Yeah, yeah. That's all the internet is, is a way to reach people that might not be able to come inside your building. Yeah, and, and please share this and share all the podcasts. You yeah. Know, that, that's important. That's yeah. important to share. You know, the media, it's another ministry today. It is, yeah. it's, it's a ministry. I, I, it is. I, I can say that. I, yeah. I, I can see that. It's a reality. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Well, maybe as we wrap up our time today, we could pray for uh, Vide Fe and Pastor Jorge and, yeah. uh, you. and, your, and your community. So would you, Pastor, you always have good prayers. Well, thank you, brother. So yeah, yeah, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this awesome opportunity to connect here with Pastor Jorge here and just share about his ministry in Vide Fe and what you're doing through him and Lord and the journey that you've led him on to reach and come to West Dundee to share that message of Christ crucified and risen to the people there and to the people in Guatemala and all the far-reaching ends of the internet and social media that you have blessed him to reach people with your mission, Lord. We just lift up to you, Vita Fe and Pastor Jorge, and the ministry that they're doing and this capital campaign that, Lord, we can see how you are blessing and putting people in place to support this ministry, to reach those that desperately need to hear this news of Jesus, Lord. Just continue to bless Pastor Jorge and his family. Continue to use them for your glory to bring more to know you as their Lord and Savior, and you just work through him and through his actions and his kindness. We pray this all in your son's name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. God bless you. God God bless bless you, brother.